Guess I get to see it with my own eyes. Jackpot. Devil may cry. What's up guys, RBG here bringing you another video pertaining to Devil May Cry 5. It's been a good month since the game's release, so I think I've given the viewers plenty of time to experience the game for themselves before I start putting out spoilers uploads. In the last video, we unveiled the history of how Nero and Nico met. It was a pretty cool read that showed how the two had more in common than they thought, so I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already. In today's upload, we'll be catching up with the Goldsteins and what they were up to before the events of Devil May Cry 5, and exactly how Dante got the late Nell Goldstein's trademark insignia corrected on his pistol. It's something that probably went over a lot of fans' heads, but we're going to talk about it and go into a brief origin of the legendary mistake that's confused the DMC community for over a decade. Now, I just want to give a brief disclosure that the information I'll be providing today comes from the official novel called Devil May Cry 5 Before the Nightmare, and it's written by the game scenario writer Bingo Morahashi. So no guys, this isn't some fan made clickbait. If you think I'm wasting 10 minutes of your time, then I suggest going to read the translations for yourself. The viewers who want a highly edited and narrated video can stick around. Now before we get into the gist of this video, I want to remind the viewers that this video is sponsored by Beautiful Halo. If you're a man or woman of culture who loves anime games and dank memes, then I highly recommend checking out their merch. They have a wide variety of stylish hoodies and other cool apparel that'll have your friends mad jelly. By using this promotional link, you get 5% off any $49 purchase or higher. So slide on over to beautifulhalo.com. The link will be in the description box below. Our story takes place back at Rock Goldstein's Guns and Ammo Shop. He received a collect call from Nico asking him to send her clothes, tools, and an issue of Folklore Times from her bedroom. Rock calls it a third-rate magazine and Nico yells at him to send it and then hangs up. He then rubs his hair which is covering the eye patch on his right eye. His mother was Nell Goldstein, the proprietor of the gun shop 45 caliber works, and his father was a wealthy man named Roy Martin. Rock wasn't sure what sparked their romance, but he thinks it may have been guns due to Roy's love for hunting. As he prepares Nico's things, he remembers his past. He was brought up in a gun-loving home, but was never allowed near them unsupervised and wasn't allowed into Nell's workshop without permission. When he was seven, Rock's reckless handling of his mother's gun cost him most of his sight in his right eye. His father Roy blamed Nell for this incident and the two argued more. Eventually, Roy told Nell that she needed to stop making guns. To Nell, that was like a death sentence. That same night, Rock went to Nell's workshop and apologized, blaming himself for what happened. She's moved to tears and she soothes him, telling him it's her fault. Rock then slips her a piece of paper. He drew a medal for Nell to recognize her greatness as 45 caliber artist, but he misspelled 45 art works as 45 art warks. Nonetheless, Nell begins to sob and hugs Rock tightly, saying, Sorry, and thank you repeatedly. And Rock says, Mommy, please don't stop making guns. I'm okay. Nell treasured Rock's gift, and at his behest, continued to make guns, and even ended her relationship with Roy, who wanted Nell to stop. While Rock wanted to go with his mother, she didn't have anywhere to go or anyone to rely on. In contrast, his father Roy was wealthy and had property. So after his parents divorced, Roy ended up gaining full custody. Rock was forbidden from seeing his mother and had to run to the bedroom to see her leave. While she didn't look back, Rock saw that she was walking with his medal in her hand. After divorcing Nell, it didn't take long for Roy to remarry. Rock couldn't accept Roy's new wife and became rebellious. When his half-sister Alyssa was born, Roy focused his attention on her, leaving Rock to become more estranged from the family. He would go on to get a job at Ouroboros in the weapons development department. He learned of his mother's whereabouts, but due to the company's strict working conditions, he wasn't able to get a day off for a year. By the time he found her, Nell had already been dead for six months. From that day, Rock abandoned his father's surname of Martin and became Rock Goldstein. While looking for the keys to Nico's bedroom, Rock comes across failed and abandoned creations of his. He reflects that while he wanted to be Nell's successor, he didn't have her abilities. He wonders what he would be capable of if he was trained by her. He'd eventually go on to open his own gun shop and took his half-sister Alyssa in since her father Roy and Alyssa's mother died. Rock suspects that it was due to suicide as Roy accrued a considerable amount of debt after a failed investment. The mansion was repossessed and they have no savings left, so Alyssa was left with nothing. Although Rock's business wasn't doing too well, he couldn't stand to see a blood relative left out in the cold, so he brought her to the shop and let her live there. Eventually, Alyssa got an office job at Ouroboros, and this allowed her and Rock to live a more comfortable life thanks to her income, and Rock's shop got more trade thanks to his improving skills. One day, Alyssa asked him if it was okay for her to bring someone home. 
When Rock asks who it was, Alyssa blushes, and Rock says, Huh, a lover? Just where did you two meet? Alyssa tells him that it's a company employee, and he replies, What does he work as? Don't tell me it's a researcher. Or Boris researches are beyond weird. And Alyssa clears her throat and tells him it's a researcher. Rock couldn't understand what Alyssa saw in Agnes. When he asked, she just say, He's cute. Rock thought she was too lovesick to understand what cute meant. He reflects on how Agnes didn't look like other researchers as he was a large and burly man. One day, Alyssa brought Agnes home to meet her brother, and Rock says to Agnes, Nice monocle, a little antiquated. To which Agnes proudly replies, It's custom made. And to that, Rock smiles at Agnes not understanding sarcasm. Alyssa soon became pregnant and quit her job and gave birth to Nico. Rock felt that the following two years were the happiest of his life. He got to see little Nicoletta grow and eat her mom's delicious food. While everything was good for two years, Agnes was summoned by the Order of the Sword and returned to Fortuna alone, even though Alyssa wanted to go with him and was willing to adopt their religion. Agnes explained that only believers can live there. She says that she can become a believer, but Agnes says it's impossible as she'd never understand their creed. A few days later, he disappeared. While planning to follow Agnes to Fortuna, Alyssa collapsed and went to the hospital. She was diagnosed with an incurable disease and was hospitalized until her death a few years later. After her passing, Rock legally adopted Nico and raised her into adulthood. He didn't intentionally raise her to become a gunsmith though. She just became interested in the lifestyle herself. One day in the shop, Nico exclaimed, well, What's this? It's so b beautiful! She was holding a photograph of two guns that were brought to Rock's shop several months ago. He replies, Mom, my mother made those. We took a photo of them. Nico responds, Your mother? My g granny? She's awesome! These guns just so happen to be ebony and ivory. During Nell Goldstein's last days, she began crafting her final masterpiece using the spare parts from several of the busted pistols Dante brought her. She crafted them with rapid fire in mind and had left them disassembled for Dante to put together, making the weapons truly his. Though she branded them with her old logo on the slides of each pistol that read, For Tony Redgrave by 45 Art Warks. Eventually, Dante would bring Ebony and Ivory back to Rock's shop. Rock found it suspicious that the engravings read Tony Redgrave. Dante explains that this was the name that he told the old woman who made them. It was common for people to give excuses like that if they robbed a gun from someone. But Rock didn't suspect Dante of any of that. He could tell from examining the guns that they were designed to hunt the occult, and he could tell that there was something abnormal about Dante. While in the shop, Dante points to the engravings on the gun barrel and asks Rock to fix it. Rock gasps at seeing 45 artworks on the gun and says, Mommy! out loud. Dante explains that he eventually wanted the spelling mistake corrected, but he didn't want any old garbage gunsmith to touch the old lady's masterpiece. If anyone should correct it, then it should be you. Don't you think, Rock Goldstein? While fighting back tears, Rock replies, Guns this beautiful shouldn't have a spelling mistake on them. After fixing the mistake, he gets the feeling that he'll never see Dante again. As Rock begins packing a box for Nico, he thinks back to her ambitions. She didn't choose to stay in Fortuna simply because of Agnes. She must have been doing something else there. Before leaving on her travels, Nico told Rock that she is giving up on becoming a gunsmith. She didn't think she could surpass Nell by just making guns. This surprised Rock, and he asked her what she planned to do instead. She replies, I don't know what weapons I'm gonna make yet, but I know they're gonna be art. Rock and Nico are connected through blood by his half-sister Alyssa, but there is no blood connection between Nico and Nell. Despite this, however, Nico still called Nell her grandmother. When she speaks to Rock, she doesn't even call him dad. Before Nico leaves, Rock says, Do your best, Nico. I know you'll surpass my mommy, I mean mother. He knows that one day Nico will be an artisan of arms. And when that day comes, he'll get to say, My daughter made that. The thought makes him smile. And that's where I'm going to end the video. I just want to say that this story revolving around the Goldsteins filled in a lot of gaps and inconsistencies for me. For one, it explained how Nico is Nell's granddaughter. There were definitely things that weren't adding up, like Nell's lineage. In the first Devil May Cry novel, she passed away and readers didn't know much about her, let alone that she had kids. I know I wasn't willing to believe that Agnes was her biological son, but as you can see, Nico isn't related to the Goldsteins by blood. She was adopted into the family by her uncle Rock, who ties in a lot of these story elements. If it wasn't for his story arc, we would never know how 45 artworks misspelling was magically fixed in Devil May Cry 5 after being misspelled for over a decade. Since he was nothing more than a 7 year old kid, it sort of makes sense that he would spell it wrong. 
Something tells me that this mistake was sentimental to his mother and she just ran with it and that's how it ended up on Dante's pistols. So everything comes together full circle. But enough of what I think. I want to know your thoughts on the Goldsteins and Ebony and Ivory. Does this particular story arc fill in the gaps for you guys? And do you like how Rock was given the opportunity to fix a mistake that he once made as an adolescent? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.